Welcome to Embedded Programming. And in this video, I want to do some experiment on that issue we saw in the previous video. We, what we notice is that when we use the ESP8266, the motors start turning only when the number gets up to about 200, when our speed is about 200. So we have this really narrow window from about 200 to 255 to control the motor speed. It doesn't give us a lot of range. But when we, and we sort of accepted this, but when we used the Arduino, we saw that, oh, no, that's not the case. Using the exact same motor control driver um, board, motor control board, we can get the motors to start turning much earlier. Um, I can't remember the number, but it's well before 200. And so that got me thinking, what is happening? What is it so different? Because we're using the same code, we're using the GPIO uh, motor control driver, which I assume is the same code. We're not doing the pulsed modulation ourselves. So this should be done by hardware. And also, if you look at it from the point of view of the L298N uh, motor control board, the signal is just coming externally anyway. So from that board's perspective, it shouldn't really matter who's signaling it, whether we're signaling it by hand, by the ESP8266 or what. That's all it's getting is a set of pulses. So why is it that it's reacting so differently to the pulse? So that means that we need to look at the pulse signature or the pulse that is being generated by the ESP8266 versus what is being generated by the Arduino over that range of time where we ramp up and we ramp down. I can't fit everything on screen, but you have to just trust me that I have it actually connected. So there's our... Um, LN29N board again. Let's um, reset our board just for the hell of it. Uh, one of these motors should start turning. And I have the power connected here, a nine volt battery again. And the only difference is I'm using the laptop to power up this guy. But remember, this is um, connecting over Wi Fi. The only reason I did that is because when we use the Arduino, we did not power it from the L29N board. So that was a diff one thing that was different. So I figured out, oh, let's do the same thing. So let's get this going. And so I'm already in a directory here for part two. And because we were doing that part, so we're doing part two, ESP8266 and exercise four, which simply control one channel. And that one channel is using the motor driver, okay? And so here we are with a ramp up and ramp down and we just have one motor um, under control. So let's run this. And so it should connect, and there we go, the numbers are going up. What we're trying to reproduce is that this motor doesn't start turning until it get into 200. All right, and so let's see what this profile look like. So I'm gonna stop this from moving around a bit by doing this, and that keeps it in place. Okay, all right, so let's, um stop the code we know it's working now let's connect up our cilia device to see what that signal look like um if i pull this out and so all i'm left with now is the board signaling i'm reading the signal out of the thing so i'm not trying to drive the board at all and so i don't need any nine volt battery and so all i want to see now is what does the signal look like now and so let's connect let's rerun this and let's take a sample from now over so it's going up going up and what i want to see is now that it's at 255 is it full so okay so this is really small as you can see um but then when we stopped it just now, it was supposed to be a 255, yep. And that proved that oh, it's not even the load, the board simply, this ESP8266, this microcontroller, it's pulse width modulation signal is not great. It, it doesn't get up to um, the full, to being fully on. So that's the problem. So I cannot really use this for my, for my, um, my motor, for my robot control then, because um, this does not give me a decent pulse to control the motor. I can use it in conjunction with an Arduino, but that sort of sucks a lot. Um, unless I can find a solution to why this is not doing performing as it should. So yeah, 
uh, this board, the, the ESP8266, for as much as the other things I like about it, uh, this is not good. Okay, so that answers why we weren't able to get a motor on earlier. It's because at its when it at its max, it's barely turning on the motor, and that's why we don't get enough speed out of it. So for the rest of our motor control, then we're not even going to consider the ESP8266. It, it, it's failing in this um, regard. So we will jump straight to just using the Arduino. Okay, so that answer a question from the previous, I'll end this here, and then you'll get a bonus video in which I'll go on to part three. So this was a sort of um, follow-up to part two. Okay, see you in the next video pretty soon.